This chapter had the impossible happen. Bakugo apologize. I can't believe it. I really cannot believe it. And when I tell you that moment brought me to tears, just seriously, it really did. As Izuku, despite everything, is still thinking of running away, but he has no strength to do it. After all of this, whatever little bit of strength he had, he was running on few. As Ochako releases her quirk, and Ida comes plummeting to the ground holding a Zuku. He's just like, how am I gonna stick this landing? And there he is on time. There's Kirishima coming in for the catch, because he's what? Unbreakable, baby. And he finally gets to tell Izuku about the legend he heard about a kid his age going in to save his friend without hesitation. Something that Hiroshima has thought about for a long time when Ashido was being confronted by Gigantamachia and he couldn't do anything to come in and help. It shows how much of an inspiration Izuku even was when he wasn't even around. I love that. And that scene of everyone coming in, rushing to Izuku's side to make sure he's okay, and even Ashido giving a little bit of a moment of saying, you know, please come back with us. I can't stand to lose anyone else. Probably talking about Midnight and her sacrifice and just wanting her to come, him to come back with them, to go back to class. But Deku's just like, you can't go back to the way things used to be. I so want to, but it's impossible. And then we have the moment where Bakugo steps forward and, you know, mentions the time. Hey, you remember that time when Shigaraki stabbed the shit out of me? <laughs> you know, I did that without thinking, without a second thought. My body moved on its own. I love that. He finally felt what Izuku did. And he goes on to recount how he always looked down on Izuku because he was quirkless, because he thought he was useless, that Bakugo thought he was above Izuku all this time, and that whenever Deku tried to help him out, it was Deku trying to live outside of his station and what have you. And it just kept earning more and more of Bakugo's hate, because he just couldn't accept that Deku was just that kind, even as someone who probably didn't need the help. And I love how Horikoshi does this, of them throughout the years, from elementary to middle school to them in high school to them now and you can slowly see the light returning to Izuku's eyes and the color pretty much returning to his face too it is magnificent as Bakugo says you know I rejected you and I, I kept losing this fight to you because you were just too kind and getting into UA and things not going the way I thought me not being as perfect as I thought you know Bakugo says that that rattled him and he had to confront how weak he truly was deep down and it is in that moment that Bakugo finally does the impossible he apologizes to Izuku for everything that he has done up until now saying that the path that Izuku has walked until now has been the right path but in this moment where he's barely able to stand slowly breaking down it's too much too much for him to handle on his own and this is Bakugo admitting that he's worried about Izuku saying you can't handle this all on your own this isn't the way to do things let us help you protect the civilians protect UA protect the people because saving people is how we win. Ooh, that old lesson coming back into play. That lesson from All Might all that time ago. And it is in that moment, yes, of course De this would snap Deku out of it. Like, Dude, I'm surprised the rain didn't just start flowing upward in this moment because it's such an impossible moment as Deku finally just collapses and apologizes for calling everyone weak and unable to keep up and Bakugo catches him. Ugh, ugh, so good, so good. And ugh, 13 without her helmet on this time, which is still catching me off guard. It's just like 13 finally without her helmet. Wow. But she escorts them back to UA that is an absolute fortress. This thing is fortified beyond belief 
Who knows how much money went into this? Gates of Tartarus be damned. And they try to escort Deku back inside. He can't believe what he's seeing, the fortified UA. And something about it combining with Shiketsu, I'm just like, oh? I wonder, like a robot? Like a giant robot? Is it going to combine like a robot? That would be pretty cool. And while Izuku starts to think that maybe he can't come back here, you hear the protest from the people. Good on Horikoshi for going this far. As the people rightfully are suspicious about Deku. Thinking, you know, they know that Shigaraki was hunting some boy. That must be him. Get him out of here. It's dangerous. What are you thinking? He's a time bomb. Some people are just like, well, but the principal guaranteed our safety, but... Others are just in complete disbelief, and you can't blame them for thinking that way. I mean, it, it's a reasonable concern, but good on Ochako, best girl coming in, holding Deku's hand to bring him inside, because, you know, that moment where she thought of who protects the heroes back during the Versus 1B training course, you know, she's been thinking this uh, even before that, who protects the heroes when they need protecting, and uh, this is Ochako fulfilling her role, not just as a waifu, but as a friend, someone who cares for Deku, and it's super sweet, and I am all for it. It is fantastic. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Did you think Bakugo would apologize, and will you accept Bakugo's apology? I know that Ultimately, Izuku will, because he even said it to Todoroki. He just needed the one excuse to forgive him. And Doc, Deku's been ready to forgive Bakugo for a long time. He's never seen him as anything else than a friend. And good on Izuku for that mindset. But not everybody can be as altruistic as that. So would you forgive Bakugo? Or would you tell him to sit and spin? I'm interested to hear from you. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications. And until next time, I've been Deuce Diz Zen, and I will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>